shine your eyes don't go buy something that will give you high blood pressure don't go buy something that the next day <laughs> it just falls apart make sure that you because most of them on Kijiji are sold as is which means whatever you find now your palaver whatever you find is your problem so you carry your problem and go you can't come back and say give me back my money hello everybody welcome back to my channel it's that proud black woman once again and thank you thank you thank you thank you so much for tuning in on another video so you know what it is every friday i come up with the best content on the internet on youtube right now so after posting last week's uh, video a couple of you reached out to me in my inbox saying oh thank you i really liked your video can you please for those of us that already landed in canada or already uh you know past the process that you talked about what is the next step and i'm like hmm that's a good idea remember i always ask you guys to give me ideas of what you want me to talk about and some of you have been listening whispering into my ears so yeah this is what the video is all about i know you've seen it from the title what's the next step after landing in canada yeah that's what this video is about so before we even get right into the video you know what to do make sure you subscribe you like you share you leave a comment in the comment section what do you want me to talk about what do you like about this video leave the comment in the comment section what did i miss if i missed something let me know because i'm here for you guys and i put a lot of work into my content so that everybody goes home happy anyway so what are you talk what are we talking about today you're going to be looking at seeing me looking into my paper because yeah i have a couple of things that i jotted down because i don't want to miss any point so it's going to be 10 things that i'm going to be talking about today and yeah i can't finish talking about everything in one video so this might have a part two who knows we'll see how it goes it depends on how uh, many people request a video for a part two but i'm going to give you like there are 10 important things that i did when i landed in canada and i think that it will work for you because it worked for everybody like i give people this advice all the time when they're new in canada they're asking me you know what are the things to do so no i think yeah is it 10 or 11 i'll give you 10 or 11 we'll see we'll see how it goes let me just put something here yeah so we'll see how it goes so anyway so the first thing i'm going to be talking about after okay so you went through all the process now you're coming to canada you've been you've gotten the golden uh email or the golden letter with the confirmation of permanent resident and yay you celebrated you're coming to canada now what what's the next step that's a dilemma for a lot of people because they'll be like i don't know anybody here in canada like it's this is me coming to canada for the first time for some people it's the first time going out of their country to a new country where there's cold and all of that so yeah not to scare you it's pretty cold here in canada so you have to come <laughs> like an eskimo let's just put that out there not to scare you but it's the reality of canada it's really cold here and but the good news is there's heater see i'm inside my house i'm not you know wearing winter coat or winter jacket or anything but yeah why not so the first thing i'm going to talk about is rent a place so if you can if you know somebody here that can help you rent a place that is month to month or if you know somebody that knows somebody that has a basement you can rent a basement that would um, accommodate you for a couple of months where you can pay month to month so if you don't like the place after landing you can actually move out and find another place so don't go for a year lease because at the end of the day you're going to be stuck with that lease especially if the place is not what you saw on the internet so i'm going to link a video up here when i talked about how to rent like a pro here in canada as a new immigrant so yeah you can go watch that video and all you need to know about renting a place in canada is right there i don't want to talk too much about it here because i already made a video about it when people asked me so please go watch the video and everything you need to learn about you know as a new immigrant in canada looking for accommodation you would find it there so let's get that out of the way number two your resume because when you come here yeah we know you saved up money that will last you for a year but do you really want to be surviving on just that money because that money the truth is ten thousand dollars is nothing if you talk about rent if you talk about every other thing that you saved up it's nothing it's just like if you're living at the modest possible way 
that's what the amount that they calculated for you to apply for the permanent residency or for the student visa that you got is all about so you first thing make sure you put together a fantastic resume and start applying don't wait start applying you might be one of the lucky ones that gets a job the next week after you land in Canada I've seen a couple of that happen so please dust off your resume if you don't have one create one there's so many templates online go on LinkedIn you know update your uh, LinkedIn profile and start applying start applying you need a job you need a job to survive here in this country you need a job and a good one at that so if you don't uh while you're waiting to get a good job if you don't uh if you're not too picky you can start like many jobs uh for the time being until you get a, a good job but if you don't if you're picky then forget about many jobs focus on what you need to do to get that good job your resume interviewing skills watch a lot of youtube videos that talks about how to prepare for interviews and things like that so that when you get that interview call you can nail it and get the job right away so that's all i'm going to talk about about dusting off your resume or creating your resume and applying for jobs number three number three <laughs> child care if you have kids this is really important child care how do you apply for child care people will be like oh, but i don't have a job yet and whatever whatever i don't when i'm ready or when i get a job i'm gonna start looking wrong answer very wrong because child care is very <laughs> it's not that easy to find a suitable spot except if you want to put your child in just any other place so just because it's last minute you have to find a place you have to put your name on the waiting list which might even take six months before they come to you before it gets to you but give them a possible time that you want so let's say you're thinking at least in three months i'm supposed to get a job give them three months I would get a job i might get a job in three months but let it be flexible so that in case i get a job before then if there's a spot i'll be able to take it and make sure it's not just one place <laughs> there's no there's no police that's going to catch you for going to several uh, uh places to put down the name of your child but remember let it be close to your house because you don't want to be leaving the house then rushing all the way down south to put your child in daycare and then rushing back north <laughs> to go to work so make sure it's close to your house so that once you're leaving your house you drop your child at the child care center and then you go to work so that's really important if your children are of school age as well make sure you find schools that are around your area and register them for schooling every like you can go to if you're in toronto for example you can go to the toronto district school board website or you can call them on the phone and they'll tell you all the, the requirements and there's always a district so you know, if the district of your where your house is located that's where you can put your child except if you're going to a private school so if you're a rich kid of beverly hills then you don't have to worry about that just go to any private school pay and enroll your child so that's what i'm going to talk about child care and schooling even if your your child or your children are of school age if they're less than 18 years if they're less than less no 18 is like a stretch but if they're less than 14 years you might want to get child care for before and after program as well so put that at the back of your mind when you're coming to Canada the next thing I'm going to talk about is school for you so if you come to this country if you're looking for jo jobs at the same time you want to upgrade your skills you want to upgrade uh you know your career if you come here when you're in a professional job that needs a license for you to uh, work here in canada then you better get right on that go to the website of that uh, organization or that licensing um, body and see what is required and start on it right away you don't want to slack on that otherwise you end up doing just many other jobs for so long so make sure that you get on that right away when you get to canada make sure that you're looking for all the things that are necessary if you have to evaluate your result via west if you have to do and with that one it might be a uh, course by course unlike the eca that you do for your or like eca that you do for immigration purposes for some of the licensing you have to do course by course so i i am a lawyer and when i came here it had to be course by course to be uh, that we submitted for our uh, evaluation results evaluation for the nca which is a body that would evaluate your result and let you know what exams you need to do to be able to get to the standard of canadian standard or whatever so anyway so make sure you get on that right away if you uh if you're uh, thinking about uh, uh you know expanding your uh, your knowledge and you know even changing your career entirely there's something that you can get 
as a permanent resident. This does not apply to people that are students. You can look for scholarship. Uh, but if you are a permanent resident, you're entitled to get grants from the government to be able to study. Sometimes the grant will cover the entire um, tuition. Sometimes it doesn't, but you also have another thing called a student loan, which you can apply and then pay back when you start working little by little. So that's really important. So you can take advantage of that. All you have to do is go to your city's um, website and see all the requirements and eligibility requirements and you're good to go. So anyway, number five <laughs> so if you have kids if you have kids uh it's difficult to like lug kids around and all of that so you might want to get a cheap car so here car is not a luxury it's a necessity so think about it if you have a family and you have to drop them off at school drop them off at daycare before you go to work and do some other running around that so you need to get a car you don't necessarily have to get an expensive car but you need to get a car that would work so when you're buying cars you can go to a website like kijiji and you can find cars that are cheap some you know from person to person that they're selling but shine your eyes don't go buy something that will give you high blood pressure don't go buy something that the next day <laughs> It just falls apart. Make sure that you, because most of them on Kijiji are sold as is, which means whatever you find, now your palaver, whatever you find is your problem. So you carry your problem and go. You can't come back and say, give me back my money. So you have to take it to your mechanic and let your mechanic look at it and tell you if this is a good deal or not. So don't buy blindly. So you can get cars for 2000 2500 and then when you upgrade, when you get a good job, then you can buy a brand new car. You can you know, spend your money on whatever. But right now, especially in the winter days, very cold. So as a new immigrant, you have to, if you're coming from Nigeria, you can get your, you can get your um, driver's license and full driver's license, not the, not the temporary one. And then you can get a letter from the FRSC stating how long you've been driving and that you have no bad records and all of that. And then you can take that to service, um, service Ontario. Uh, that's if you're in t Ontario or whatever body is responsible in whatever province that you find yourself and you can use that to exchange it's not like exchange if you're from the US and you have a reciprocal agreement with Canada you can just exchange and get the uh, Canadian driver's license otherwise for Nigerians what you do is you take that with that and then they give you like um, they give you like um, they allow you to skip some process because usually driving takes about two years minimum, which is you get the G1, which is you just doing the exam. So it's like a learner's permit and then you can drive, but you can't drive by yourself. You have to drive with somebody else beside you. And then after one year, then you can do uh, the G2, which is the road test and then you can drive, but then there's still restrictions. And then after a year, you go for the full test where you can do the highway test and all of that. And so it takes two years. So you can skip all of that and do it in one month. How do I mean? So what you do is everybody has to do the G1. So you, and that's, I'm talking about Ontario. I don't know what I obtains because I'm in Ontario. I don't know what obtains in other provinces, but here in Ontario, you have to do the um, G1, which is the uh, exam, computer-based exam. And then after that, if you already got the exemption with your uh, card, with your driver, Nigerian driver's license or whatever license that you use in your country, then you can uh, use that to you know, just go direct and jump all the way to the full license, the G license. You pass, you're good to go. That's it. So you can get yourself a car and you can, you can make things easier on your family. So number six, <laughs> number six is apply for health card. This is really important. So if you have little kids, or if you have uh, grown ups, or you have pre-existing conditions, it's really important that you apply for your health card. How do you do that? As a, a permanent resident, I think it takes three months from your landing before you can uh, apply for card here in Ontario. I don't know about all other um, provinces, but you need three months. So within that time, I would advise that you might want to get an insurance, health insurance that will cover you for the period that the uh, government of Canada is not covering. However, you can keep all your receipt and then you can claim it after you get after you get uh, your um, coverage after three months. But that's really important for you to get because it's free treatment. Who doesn't like free treatment? And uh, in Ontario, I don't know if it's been scrapped, but up until last year, 2020, if you're under the age of 24 and you don't have insurance, uh, you can get free prescription medication as well. So 
what's not to like so that's another thing that i wanted to talk about that you have to take seriously how do you get your health card if you're in ontario go to um service ontario with your proof of landing and if you're a worker if you uh, if you have a worker you're also entitled but if you're a student you're not entitled but let me tell you a secret let's say your wife or your spouse is uh, a worker and you are a student you can be under them because they are eligible to apply and then you can apply as a dependent under them so you still get your um health card one way or the other so yeah keep that secret in mind don't tell anybody so number seven <laughs> i'm so dramatic today i don't know why and guess what it's like 12 midnight my kids are sleeping and this is me making videos in my office but anyway number seven so what do you do connect with friends so people that you know that are here in canada that are friends connect with them because it can get pretty boring pretty fast and sometimes it's so confusing it's so depressing as a new immigrant you don't know people you don't know places connect with people check online check on facebook check on linkedin who is in canada that you might know or that your friend that uh, or that your friend knows and also there are groups there are groups that you can join that uh welcoming people like your community if you're from kenya you can live for a kenya community um association you can live for if you're from nigeria and nigerian association if you're from italy italian association and join those communities and they can help you settle uh, make things uh, the transition from your country to here pretty easy also the government of canada has different programs with at the community center at some resource uh, centers for uh, new immigrants and newcomers and they can help you even with resume writing with um with settling with uh, all kinds of services with job fairs a lot of things that they can help you with that you can take advantage of as a new immigrant so you have to find out which ones are around your area if you are here in toronto you can call 311 and ask them well i'm a new immigrant i don't know what are the things that are available can you please point it out to me and you know they would do that so one thing that i forgot about the second point what i talked about child care is once you get your child care um once you get a spot for child care you can apply for something called child care subsidy what does that mean it's a way the government is supplementing your child care and you can be lucky to get zero payment for child care child care in ontario especially in toronto is very expensive for infants for babies you can be spending as much as 90 dollars a day that's 2000 plus a month so if you're getting zero zero um if the government is covering all your expenses yeah that's really good stuff even if they're not covering all because you have to report you have to do a tax um tax uh, return and with that tax even though if you've never been to this country uh, country you have to do your international tax return so they will calculate how much you made in the previous two years before you move to canada and convert it to canadian dollars and see how much you um are eligible for so with mine when i came and they converted the amount that i made i was a student before and then i only worked for a year and i was only working part-time so when they converted all the money that i made in the previous two years before coming to canada i was uh, eligible for like full subsidy so i wasn't paying anything for the first year and it was bliss y'all it was bliss but for you to get that you have to show that you are either both of you and your spouse are working full-time or both of you are going to school full-time or one person is going to school and one person is in uh um, is working but you can't be at home jobless but there's a three months period that they give here in toronto you get three months job seeker um a period where they will give you the subsidy but you have to find a job within three months otherwise your child or 90 days otherwise your child is sent back to you at home because they're not going to be paying for you sitting at home doing nothing and sending your child to go spend taxpayers money so you can apply for child care subsidy as i said and that would be really uh, good and it will help you a great deal so also there's something called the child benefit this everybody can get so if your child either born here or not if your child is born here you're eligible to get it if your child but it depends on the status of the parent if your child is canadian it doesn't mean that you're you're going to get child benefit if you are a student if you're a temporary don't let me say student if you're a temporary resident i believe you have to have spent 18 months here in canada before you're eligible to apply for child benefit and then you have to file your tax return every year because without the tax return 
return you can't get any benefit whatsoever from the government so you have to file your tax return every year and if you're a temporary resident maybe you're a student or you're a worker or whatever it is you're um whatever it is that's under that falls under temporary resident then you have to be here 18 months if it has changed then maybe it just changed yesterday and also if you're a permanent resident you're eligible right away so your children under the age is of 18 all of them you're eligible to get child benefit depending on how much your household income is so that's one thing you need to put in your right hand or in your left hand whichever hand that you use and you don't eat with it because that's some free money for you to be able to settle down in Canada until you get yourself up and running so now number eight <laughs> it's so weird when I do eight anyway so number eight can, uh, you can take advantage of government funded community uh, resources for new immigrants as I said it could be uh, at community centers it could be anywhere you just Google Google is a girl's best friend. Google, you take advantage of all these community uh, um, uh, outreaches and you know resources that would help you to settle down. You can find a job through that. You can volunteer there. You can help other immigrants there. You can learn a lot of things. You know, cooking classes, whatever. Meet up people in the community that are also new immigrants or, or that has been here a little while uh, more than you have been, and they can show you around. You can make friends if you have. People that have children you can also you know meet up for play dates and all of that not in the, this time of pandemic though but once the pandemic you know, is over you can meet up you can have cooking classes you can have play dates you can have any of that so take advantage of all of those things number nine <laughs> I feel like I'm going to stick that nine number nine or number 10 I don't even know what where I am now hook yourself up to food bank a lot of people they feel like oh why would I want to go to a food bank? Girl, you're missing out. Because if you don't have the money, who are you deceiving? Join a food bank. It could be Daily Bread Food Bank, which is like almost every area has one, or Salvation Army, or some other uh, food banks that are out there. Join a food bank. It will help you a lot with your groceries, so you don't have to spend so much or the money that you don't have on groceries, because groceries, if you have children, could go up really fast really quick so make sure that you find yourself a food bank that you can take advantage of and as soon as you get money or you get a good job then don't keep taking from this food bank because this is for people that are vulnerable these are people that cannot afford a lot of things or this is for people that you know are new immigrants as well and are yet to find their feet so once you are able to find your feet please leave the food bank system let somebody else take advantage and remember to pay it forward so whatever you took from the food bank that helped you and you know how much it helped you you know how much you put smiles on your faces by the time you are able to stand on your own two feet also donate something you don't have to donate money you can donate your time volunteer to you know help them serve help them clean help them do something or if you can also donate financially or you can donate like you know maybe monthly or quarterly or yearly you can buy uh, groceries and you know take it there and they can share to people that are taking advantage of the food bank so these are the things that i thought to talk about today i don't want this video to be too long so if you if i missed out anything let me know but these are the important things that you need to know before you land in canada or if you are just landed in canada these are the things that you need to know and yeah see you next friday before you go remember to subscribe like share and give me a huge thumbs up people and you know i'm trying my best here tell me what you want to know follow me on my social media on instagram at that proud black woman every of my social media is on the screen right now please show me some love okay let's grow this channel and you know let's get it popping in 2021 I love you all. Be good to everyone around you. Be good to yourself. Don't be hard on yourself in 2021. You're going to achieve your goals. Just work towards it. I love you. Have a wonderful day. Bye.